Good morning. Welcome to the Plaza Presbyterian Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today is Sunday, May 16th, the last Sunday in the season of Easter. Next Sunday, we'll celebrate the high holy day of Pentecost when the wind of the Holy Spirit rushes through. We are pleased that you have found your place to join us here today, and so I invite you to do um, anything that will make you comfortable at this time and space, whether it's to grab a cup of coffee or your Bible or an extra cushion. But let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, beginning in chapter 1. We'll start with verse, seven, uh, verse 15 and read a few selected verses till the end of the chapter. Listen for the word of God. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, Friends, The scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those arresting Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during this time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the day from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph, called Bersabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and the apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God and Holy One, maker, creator, and author of life, on this day, in this moment, in this time that you have commanded for us to set aside to attend to you. We ask that you would open our eyes and our hearts 
as we hear your word, we would also be moved to act. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As seasons go, we are in deep. We are in deep change, deep shifts, deep deep enough to be able to see the difference that a year has made. And deep into a specific season to know that we will see a huge change in the next few months as well. The tide is turning on the pandemic in a good way, at least in the U.S. We may not be in herd immunity just yet, due to those who still refuse to wear masks or get vaccinated, but things are better. This last week, the Center for Disease Control stated that Americans can safely go without masks. Now, this has opened a Pandora's box that is not in the wheelhouse of the CDC to fix. Instead, it leaves the general public, elected officials and employers and families and so on, to decide what the best course ahead is. And as the church, we are there too, wondering when the right time will be to meet again in person. Pastors and church leaders are wrestling with hybrid worship or offering both in-person and virtual experiences, remaining only virtual, but for how long? We're shifting. And we're not sure if the coming shift is going to be welcome or safe. A friend of mine, the Reverend Don Hyde in Greensboro, recently wrote, I am struck by the upcoming theme of Pentecost and the constant sound of sirens causing alarm within us that something is wrong. Something needs immediate care, she said. Something or someone needs the priority of our attention right now because something is not okay. We've heard this alarm sound from our black communities as well as among healthcare workers and teachers. We must listen, she said, to the voices telling the truth that things are not okay. Now at such a time as that, in, in a kind of storm, we want to scream at Jesus to wake up and do something, as the disciples did on the lake when Jesus fell asleep at the back of the boat. We're afraid, and we want Jesus to take the wheel. But what if he doesn't? And what I mean by that is, what if Jesus doesn't take us back to the familiar lakeshore that we came from, the place that we know and love? What if God wants us to proclaim good news of the gospel, not good news of the church, but good news of the gospel, on another shore that we haven't seen yet. Now that may sound uncomfortable and even heretical, but Jesus constantly redirected the disciples away from known and familiar paths and into uncharted territory, even as far as the grave. A friend told me recently about an elder at her church who was dying, dying too young and with much still to do. While still playing his weekly tennis matches, he was told that he had a cancer that was progressing rapidly. He had also been recently elected a new elder in their church, but he wouldn't live long enough to serve out his term. And she wrestled with this. How could this be, she wondered. Why would God call him at such a time as this if he couldn't fulfill his call. She wrestled with these questions and the questions of other parishioners, and as a session they came together to discuss what to do next, perhaps a little like the apostles when they gathered to cast lots. But then as they gathered and they wrestled with what this could mean, She said, but then I thought about the witness of the resurrection that this elder is sharing with us, members of his church, through his very life and his death. Perhaps he is moving us, moving into his calling as a leader in the church now more than ever. 
If we have eyes to see, will we see how he bears witness to the resurrection of Jesus right now? And as he moves on, there will be an opening for God to choose someone new. And there will be a new body and a new voice and new talents who will rise among us and lead, and we will change with it. She said, this is a part of being a living organism, the body of Christ. Change is the constant we can count on. Her words made me wonder about her particular situation and her particular elder, how, as she said, his call will be resurrected in a new person, in a new body. And the more I thought about it and reflected on it, it did seem like the path of the Gospels from so long ago. It made me think about the church, the Plaza Church, and how it will be resurrected in a new way in the months and the years to come, in a way that those of us here today might not even recognize or imagine. God has been resurrecting life in new bodies since, well, since forever. Eve came from a rib. Jonah was born anew from a whale. Through Moses, God made water come out of a rock. God gave babies to women and men who were much too old. And in Jesus, we have life through death. And long before COVID, we saw the church being reborn in ways that a generation ago we couldn't have imagined. Amazing dynamic ministries, congregations faithfully moving into old churches and finding new life, pastors and neighbors making church happen in bars and music halls and coffee shops and school gymnasiums, change of location, is not a new thing. In 2008, I moved from California to Philadelphia to work with an old friend of mine to um, build a new church out of an old church. With help and direction from the local presbytery, he had begun a worshiping community within a large church building in the heart of downtown Philadelphia called Broad Street Ministry. It started with a few musicians and a group of misfit church outcasts, and within a few years, there were over 300 people in worship every Sunday night and hundreds of hungry people being fed lunch in that same sanctuary during the week with a presence of hope in a space that had been dark for so long that people had forgotten there was even a church there. I used to tell people that I worked at that church across from the University of the Arts, people who passed by or drove by that huge building every day and would say, there's a church there? In Aramaic, the word apostle means to be sent out. To be an apostle was not to stay and build, as Peter wanted to do when they witnessed Jesus transfigure on the mountain. When Peter said, let's build a booth to remember this amazing moment. But no, instead Jesus said, no, we're going to go back down into the valley and pretend this didn't happen. Let's move on. There's more people to minister to. The book of Acts is a continuation of the gospel story in in Luke. In the gospel, we see all that Jesus had done and taught. And in Acts, we see how the early church developed in response to Jesus' life and resurrection. The theme of witness, of telling the story, is central to Acts. It is not about staying in place. It's not about building memorials to where Jesus lived and died. It was about moving and traveling and sharing. The book of Acts shows how the way of Christ, the way of Jesus, moved far beyond Jerusalem to all of Judea Judea and Samaria and beyond. 
Plaza Presbyterian is a special place, but we know that the gospel of Jesus goes way beyond 2304, the Plaza Boulevard. Every worship service since we've stopped meeting in person has reached people who haven't been able to worship with us in years, whether because of a physical distance or other more personal reasons. We also know that the Holy Spirit cannot be contained to an address. What God has done through the people of Plaza Presbyterian Church is a legacy that reaches far beyond the location of these pews. At Broad Street Ministry in Philadelphia, with permission of the Presbytery, we sold all the pews that were bolted down in that sanctuary in order to make room for people to eat at our ever-growing meals that we called Breaking Bread. We could have kept the pews that at one time sat a thousand church folk or traded them in for tables so that we could feed hungry hundreds of hungry people a week. We needed tables more than we needed pews. In Greek, Iglesia, the church, refers to the gathered ones, or believers called into community with God. But the book of Acts describes church as something on wheels, not something bolted down. It's never described as a building or a polity or even a denomination. The church serves with the community but it isn't the community. It is much more mysterious, much more driven by the Holy Spirit than something we could ever put our hands on as tangibly as an address or a building or a pew. And thanks be to God.
As we gather our hearts and minds together to pray, we lift up um, prayers that are known to us as a community. And I want to share with the community that we just learned yesterday that Helen Lineberry passed away early yesterday morning. She was with um, Becky at that time, and we will be keeping all of them in our prayers. Let us pray. Holy Creator God, you lived among us to teach us and to show us how to love. And so in love and in humility, we pray for siblings around the world, for those who are dehumanized by their struggle for existence, for those who are overshadowed by the closeness of death, for those besieged by fear, anger, and relentless peril, for those ensnared by systems beyond their control, O oh God, we pray in love that we would listen, that we would see them, and that we would demand change. Author of life, breath of being, you are here, you are with us in this very moment as constant presence and insistent voice. And so in gratitude and in boldness, we pray that as your disciples, as your apostles, as we gather and as we go out, that you would equip us to end all of the church, to overwhelm the world with truth, with kindness, that you would help us to be strong in our resolve and compel us to authentic discipleship. In your love and your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those in need, those known and unknown to us. As a community of faith, we lift up Carolyn Davidson, Ed Messer, the Lineberry family, Bill Bruton and Walter Eddy. Holy God, we have come here this morning peering into dark places, looking for new words and new wonders. You know why we are here today. You know what we are looking for. As we conclude this time set aside for worship, come and sit beside, beside us and then walk with us into the rest of these, this day and all the coming days. And as we occasionally come into silence or run out of words, O oh God, we will pray the words that Jesus gave us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
remind you that worship does not end in this hour, that we go through our days in prayer, in song, and in thanksgiving. So as you continue your day and the days ahead, may the presence of God be felt near. May you feel the pull to be good news and to tell good news to everyone you see. And remember that wherever you go and whatever you do, God is with you. Please join me in the benediction. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.